Hi, I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library and welcome to Art Club. This week we're going to do a painting by another famous artist. Uh, her name is Hilma Off Klint. She was born in 1862 and she died in 1944. Um, she's a really, really interesting person. Now, the painting that we're going to do today was uh, she did in 1906 and you see it's abstract. Now, if you've done Art Club before, you probably realize that this is way before the other abstract paintings were happening. Um, this is way before last week we did Kandinsky, that's abstract. Um, we've done Mondrian, Mondrian at some point, I think. Yeah, we did for one of these video ones. Um, and this is way before any of that because when abstraction happened was generally a progression we've gone over before when cameras had been invented and they were readily available artists started doing stuff that was less realistic because before that most things were realistic right and then cameras came out and then the impressionists happened like uh, Monet and then the expressionists evolved from that and that's like Van Gogh and so on and so forth until you get to abstraction like um, like Mondrian and uh, Kandinsky and later Picasso and all of that, right? This was before all of that. This was before everybody had a camera. This was before people started doing art that wasn't realistic. And that's why it was so revolutionary. In fact, she thought that she was so far uh, ahead of her time, she didn't want most of her art shown until 20 years after her death. And um, for the most part, it wasn't until the 1980s. Um, and that just to me is fascinating. Now, um, for her, her art was a spiritual practice. Uh, she was a theosophist, which um, was a movement that was pretty common around then, um, around, you know, early 1900s, where they believed that they could gain knowledge through the spirit world. And so this was the day that they had like seances, trying to reach the great masters to, to inform their art and stuff like that. It was really interesting. And that influenced off Clint's um, art. She did this thing called automatic drawing, which, which artists still do, um, where she, it was kind of a meditative experience. She would be meditating and then just kind of draw whatever happened. And a lot of her art is that way. I don't know if this is the case with this, uh, this one. Um, but uh, it's definitely interesting. It's brightly colored. It's full of curves. Everything. I don't think there is a straight line. No, there are. There, there are two straight lines in the middle of that um, of that big circle. But other than that, there are no straight lines in this whole painting, which is interesting. So, there's a traceable in the description. This is a great one just to color because it's just. It's not. None of it's hard. It's just so much. Um, as you see here, I'm gonna trace this. This is the traceable I made um, that I drew earlier. So, uh, but I'm, we're going to talk about tracing, but let me first, let me show you what I have here. Um, this is, uh, I have this watercolor paper. It is uh, eight by 10 and it is taped to just a sheet of paper from my printer that has the, um, design on it. It's like, I, I did it on my iPad. I printed it out and then it's under here. This is a light box. You definitely don't have to have one of these. You can get them inexpensively though. Um, it's just a light. It's powered by USB. Um, you can also use a tablet with a light color on the screen. You can even hold this stuff up to a window and that'll work fine too. Another option, there are so many options for tracing, um, especially if you're doing it on canvas or something, is um, you would get this printed piece of paper, right? You could scribble all over the back of it with a pencil or a pastel or something like that and then put it on top of whatever paper or canvas you're using and trace over it that way and then that design still goes on there. Um, I don't recommend that if you're using watercolor, but if you're using all opaque paint, go to. That's a real, I've used it before, that's a great way. There's so many ways to trace stuff. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna be tracing today. You can totally draw it from scratch. There's absolutely nothing hard about this. It's just, it's a lot of lines. So here's, here's what else I have besides this 
this and if you do trace like this tape it on two sides like this so you can still look up if you're having a hard time seeing it but at the same time it's not going to be wiggling around anyway so pencil um i have this is watercolor this is an orangey browny color specifically it's quin uh, quinacridone sien sienna this is a color that I don't really use often, but it's about the color of the background of that. And so that's what I'm going to use today. Um, a, a light wash of burnt sienna or even yellow ochre like we used last week would be fine. Uh, I would suggest you add just a wee bit of brown to orange if you're going that route. A wee bit. It's mostly orange. Anyway, so I have just that one color for the background. Um, and I have... Let's see, I have some paint markers. I have white, pink, light-ish blue, and um, yellow. We'll see how much we use these and see how well, because I'm not quite sure how well colored pencils are gonna work for colored pencils. I have a bunch of them. That's the way we're gonna do most of this. I have white, pink, light yellow, a darker yellow, an orange, a blue, a purple, black, a lighter blue, a super light blue, a red, and a green. And I think that covers all of them. So that's what I'm gonna use for this one. This is another example of use what you have. If you want to color it, that's great. If you want to use crayons to do the whole shebang, that's fantastic. Um, do it your way. And if you do, please take a picture of it and send it into the library's social media because we do love to see what you do. Anyway, so let's get to tracing. All I'm gonna do, I have this, I push it down more, you can see it better, the, the design. All I'm gonna do is trace over it and that's it. I'm not gonna mark hard and I don't suggest you do just so it doesn't show too much through there or anywhere that I have to erase. I don't like mess up the whole thing. So I'm just gonna trace, I'm gonna go from there to there. Oh, and I have, um, you see, I don't have it taped to this. I just have it taped, them taped to themselves and that's so I can move it around freely without any problems. Okay, here is our drawn lines. Um, it is traced just like the one before it. Go ahead, if I can get this off. This thing's hard, there we go. It's hard to turn off sometimes. Anyway, so here is our traced drawing. Again, you can draw it from scratch or you can get exactly this and print it out um, from a, a link in the description. So you can do it like me or totally go for it yourself. Or else just draw squirrelies and stuff like that if that's what makes you happy. Okay, uh, put this up and we will get to painting. Okay, so here is my painting taped down. Um, and what I'm going to do first is I have this eraser. I'm going to make all of my lines lighter um, just because I kind of drew them a little bit heavy. But I'm just going to go over this this eraser because I don't want them showing up this much in the painting and remember the number one rule with all of this is any lines or any marks that you don't want on your paper you have to get rid of before you introduce water because once you get this stuff wet the pencil is permanent okay I've lightened this considerably now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up my paint and um, just like I think we did last week, uh, I'm going to do wet and wet to get this covered with paint. So and wet and wet means wet paint on wet surface. So first I'm going to wet this. Last week it went fine. I'm always leery when I'm using paper that isn't a hundred percent cotton, which this is not. But it worked last week, so fingers crossed it'll be just fine. All I'm going to do, I'm going to wet my paper, and then I'm going to paint it over with that watercolor. Just make sure your paper is wet. At the same time, though, make sure you don't have a puddle, because a puddle will just make all of the paint 
congregate in that one place and you'll be unhappy and you won't get even a remotely reason, uh, even coat. And if it's not totally even, that doesn't matter because the coat on here isn't. But you still want it, you don't want it way off. So, okay, I'm just going to test this since I'm only using this. Yeah, that's good. Here, I'm just going to paint it on. I'm not going to do like a super heavy coat of it just because... Um, I want to be able to see this stuff over it and I don't want to have to work too, too hard to be able to see it. So now that I have color on my paper, I am going to dry it. Now, um, if you are not going to use watercolor you can totally use other kinds of paints like um, you can use acrylics or whatever you want uh, the original was done in oil but um, I guess the same rules apply I would do the, tr the, the tracing afterward after this part if you're using acrylic um, or something uh, opaque but uh, other than that it should work out about the same so I'm going to dry this completely and then we'll mess with the other stuff. Okay, my paint is dry. Now, part of this is experimental. I'm going to go ahead. I need my, I need to sharpen a few of these pencils. But um, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to experiment a little bit because I'm a little bit worried about this white showing up well enough. Um, so your mileage may vary. <laughs> according to what kind of art supplies you have, what you're using. So just try it out and see if you're happy with it. If you're not, you can switch to something else. You know what? That's okay with me. It's kind of pinky, but I don't have a terrible problem with it. So this is me coloring hard in white. If you're not happy with what yours looks like here, just use something else. You can use paint. Um, you can use paint markers. Um, I, you can use gel pen. White gel pen would do too. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna color these two rings in first. Okay, there are those two rings. I'm also gonna go ahead and do these dots in here. I want to keep this as much colored pencil as I can. Um, so as much colored pencil as I can without, it, you know, being able to see it over the background. Um, and then there's this whatever shape in this. And I kind of colored into that before I realized it shouldn't be there. But that's okay. So there's our white. Is there any other white that isn't going to be outlined? There's this little bit up here. I didn't do all the flourishes around here, but you can totally do that if you want. Let's see. Okay. Yeet. It's okay. So there's our white. Um, next up, let's go with light yellow up here. This color specifically, I think, is cream. Let's see what it looks like. Hmm. So I'm not happy with that. So you know what I might do? I think I'm just going to use the uh, marker for these. We'll see. We might end up going back over that with a marker too. Let's find out. Okay. So... In true mixed media style, I'm going to color this guy with a paint marker. Um, it will also work just fine with um, a uh, paintbrush and regular paint. So I'm not incredibly happy with this situation either. So I have two options. 
can go straight to paint or I can let this dry and see what happens. Let's see, is that, no. And see what happens with some colored pencil over it. And we'll do that first. What we definitely can go ahead and do um, is these little lines while I wait for that to dry. Okay, and then we can go ahead, this line here in this little loop de loop that's mostly off the page are also this yellow. See, these markers are just, they're way better for lining on paper than actually um, coloring in on paper because they're meant for harder surfaces and not, not paper. But let's see, I just, that might be dry enough. Okay, so I'm going to sharpen this and see what this looks like on top of that. <laughs> looks like I should be ordering white pencils in large packs. Okay, so this I'm liking better. This is retaining the yellow. Eee, it's not dry enough. Um, while, yeah, that just needs to dry all the way. We'll come back to it um, while adding some white and adding some better texture. So we'll come back to that. I'm also going to do this one that way. Okay, and when that dries, we're going to go over that in the same way as this. Let's see. Now we can go, let's go ahead and do the blacks, which are right here and right here. Um, we'll get to that. Let's do this one first. Okay, now I can, ah, darn it. I can go back over this and get those holes filled in. That's because this is cold pressed paper and not hot pressed, but I'm okay with it. Now, I guess I'll start in the middle. There's a dot of white on this one, right? And then just like that, and I'll do a ring of light blue. It's like that. And then a ring of this cream that didn't really work out. More white will do. And then switch to black. And then just kind of blend that in there a little bit. Oh, this is jagged. That's okay. Now here I left those lines just so I could see where I put the paint markers. I think I might do that here too. So, got that and that worked out. Let's see how dry is this. It's getting there. Let's see. I'm just going to go, yeah, now that's good enough. You see how this is just kind of, it's lightening it up, but doing it this way is also helping with the texture and evening it out a little bit. Just make sure if you're doing, trying to pull off something like this, then make sure it's dry. Okay, there's that, that's better. Do the same thing over here. Next up, I wanna see what that blue looks like on this guy because we might end up doing something similar. I'm okay with this. So I'm just gonna color this. It's very, this is a really light blue color. The middle of it is yellow, so I'm just gonna leave that out. Now I'm gonna do the same thing I did over here and go over this a little bit with white to lighten it up and help it stand out a little more. Better. So much of art is layering. So this one over here, this little guy, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to color this and then I'm going to go over it again with some white. Okay, and I see this is another light yellow, so I'm going to go ahead and color this and we'll go back over it with colored pencil later. Okay, 
And there's that. We need to let that dry. Um, next up we have this. I'll go ahead and do that blue. Where'd my blue go? There it is. See, colored pencils always look lighter than they're going to be on the paper every time. Okay, there's that. I'm going to do the same thing. I also did the top of this little S shape thing. I'm going to do the same thing over here. But I think I'm going to leave this out because that seems a little bit darker. Okay. Next up, let's see, let's see what the pink looks like. I'm going to go over it with white again too. So I'm going to paint, I'm going to do this pink. Yeah, I'm going to do this pink and then go over it with white. Down here is pink, and that goes, oh, it's a shell, okay. Okay, and I see the middle is different colors, so I'll just go ahead and do some blue over it. That's one thing I really, really like about colored pencils is that you can layer them so nicely. In the middle, do more pink. I'm simplifying this some. Okay. Okay. Next, here I have this is purple. I'm going to do color in this one. Showing up nicely. Okay, I'm just going to color all these in the color that they are. Okay, and this is the color of that. So I'm going to go ahead and color this in. I think I'm going to leave room, a little bit of space in this one so I can see those lines. forgot that part. I'm going to go ahead and color that in with this stuff. Okay. So that's drying. I get some yellow. I'm going to do the next ring of this up here. And I'm leaving it, I know it's not showing up that well, but I think it'll be fine once we ring it with paint pen. Okay, I'm definitely going to go back over these with white. But you see I'm not coloring into the pink because I know that, that will blend, they'll end up starting to blend together and I don't want that. I just want this blue to be lighter. Okay. And here's what I'm going to do about these. I'm going to color them white. Like that. I'm going to go back over them with the light yellow and see if that would have worked for us earlier. Meh, let's try this yellow. Yeah, that would have worked well enough. Oh well. These white spots back in. And what else? This I'm going to color in. What did this look like about white? Nothing. Okay, I'm going to color this, this color. Okay, I'm going to go back over this one with cream and not yellow because I want this yellow and not super light yellow. Hmm. 
Okay. Any other things that aren't lines, that guy? So the shell is pink. Okay, and his head is blue. I go back over the head with the white. Okay, what else we got? Might be it for things that don't involve markers. And I do see that I will need a red. Okay. So, here's how we're going to do this. Um, I'm just going to start. Oh, forgot this up here. This is pink. And this is white. The pink a little bit and then this swirly bit is blue I'm gonna go over this with white too there we go okay now for paint markers all I'm doing is just using paint markers that correspond to the lines in this thing you can also probably get by pretty well oh, I still need to do this you can also probably still get by pretty well um, just using colored pencils. Okay. So, there we go. All I'm doing is outlining this guy with blue. Okay, and then this gets lined like that. Uh, let's see what else is blue. This, oh, I for no, that is yellow. Nothing. This line is blue. And then this line is blue. See, that's why I wanted to be able to see these lines is just so. It makes this easier, like I'm not trying to, you know, brand new, draw a reasonable circle. Okay. What other blue lines do we have? We have this. Oh, I forgot that little bit. That's the colored pencil blue. Get to that in a second. Okay. That was the colored pencil blue. We'll find it again. Anyway, so now I'll get some yellow. Oh wait, I'll do this up here first too. Just drawing along the lines that I traced earlier, as well as I can see them. Okay. Oh, this has a yellow middle color that in. What else do we have that has a yellow line? Is that it? Might be. Okay. Next we will do some pink. Okay. Pink lines. Let's see how this looks over that. That's okay. Okay. And this S shape and around this top circle get this more opaque is that it for pink probably not but it's all I see right now next up red this is red and and do this blue. Now wait on that guy. Okay, and see that's that 
kind of navy color. So I'm just going to do that one in color pencil. I'm just going to draw this line. Just like that. It just stays on top of there. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to get white and I'm going to outline these. Okay, and we have a white outline here. Next, let's see. Oh, we have some up here too, don't we? Okay, so this inner ring here is white. I'm going to go ahead and color in these dots just because I want them to show up a little bit more. Okay. Hmm. Little dot in the middle of that. Okay. Widen this just a, just a hair. Okay, this around here is pink. Okay. These little things coming off here are pink, and this one goes up right under there. There we go. Just gonna go ahead and do those. The outline is yellow, so we'll get our yellow back out. We need to do the whole ring over here, too. And that crosses over that shell. What about, let's see, this guy's yellow. Okay, this guy, call that blue, and then this guy, oh, that's what I forgot. Nothing. So I'm going to color this little shell opening, this color, and then I'm going to go back over it with a white colored pencil. There we go. And now I'm going to do blue on that. It's not quite that color, but we're calling it that color. Okay, there's a little line of black. Where's my black? Here to define that, and so I'm going to put that back. And this guy's blue. We're almost done. Do you need to go back over this bit with white? I think we're done here. See, not, not too shabby. Oh, that needs pink up here. This is outlined in pink. There we go. I think that's it. So I'm going to sign my painting. We'll sign it. It's purple down in this corner. Don't forget to sign your painting. It's awesome because you did it. So it was a fun experiment that turned out okay. I'm happy enough with it. It was definitely interesting and it was nice to learn about a new artist who I had never heard of. I will definitely be looking into her life and her art because it sounds like she had an interesting one. I mean, being hitting abstract abstraction way before anybody else is really fascinating in itself, I think. Um, just being so far ahead of her time and knowing it that she didn't want her stuff shown until after she was dead, which is crazy to me. I just think, you know, it's just she, she knew she was doing something revolutionary, but she also knew that it was probably too revolutionary for her time. And judging from the way critics, early critics of everybody who's done anything revolutionary have hated what they've done. Um, and that goes for 
Picasso that goes for Monet, certainly goes for Van Gogh. Um, I just, I, I think she might have been right, but this was just, this was a fun time in mixed media. I certainly enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time too. I know this doesn't look exactly like hers and I'm okay with that because I couldn't if I wanted to. And I see, looks like little letters up in here, but I don't know what they say. Um, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, I hope you had a good time. I certainly did. And, uh, yeah, if you painted along with me or colored in the traceable or whatever you did, please take a picture of it and send it into the library social media because we love to see what you do. And yeah, thank you for joining me for this week's art club. I will see you next week and we will do more art. Bye.